Hi everyone, in a previous video I showed you this 4 watt ceiling fan and I told you that it can also be used as a generator. Now this cost me just 140 pesos which is around 2 Great British Pounds or 3 US Dollars. Let me show you how it can be used as a generator. So here I have a regular LED light bulb that normally plugs into your ceiling or screws into your ceiling and I'm just going to connect the pins from the fan directly to this light bulb and watch what happens when I spin the fan. See how it turns on? So we can actually use this as a kind of generator. Now I don't know how much power it's going to be able to generate um, but potentially we could make this into a wind generator or we could connect it to say a bicycle or something like that and we could actually generate and hopefully store the electricity. So I've spent the last few hours playing with this, seeing what it can power what it can't power and the nice thing is that even at a relatively low rpm you still manage to light this light bulb now i've spent so much time trying to measure the exact output from this i've used power meters or watt meters i've used multimeters and the problem is that the voltage is so unstable that i can't really get a good measurement plus it's ac so i'm limited to what equipment i can measure it with but my estimate is around three to four watts which would make sense because this consumes around four and a half watts when it's spinning normally um, so my estimate is it's outputting anywhere between three and four watts and like i said even at a relatively low rpm it's still managing to output quite a bit of power now here I have an exercise bike and it's got a flywheel on the front. The great thing about this is that I can spin the wheel for like a couple of seconds and then this will keep going for maybe a minute and because this only requires a low RPM it can keep the light going. So let me spin up the exercise bike. So I'm just going to spin the pedals using my hand, I'm not even going to use my feet. The flywheel gets up to speed, we put this against it and you can see that it's lighting out with no problem at all. Even as the RPM slows down, you can see it still keeps it stable because it does not have to spin that fast to output power. In fact, spinning it faster is just a waste of time because it won't generate extra power anyway. Now, if you're curious, all I've done is put some electrical tape around here for added grip. Um, so nothing fancy, it just makes it grip better against the wheel. Now, I have tried powering other stuff aside from light bulbs and it's been a bit hit and miss to be honest. Here I have a little USB adapter and a USB strip light. So let's plug that in. Again, I'll get the exercise bike up to speed. And you can see there that it just keeps flashing on and off. Now I found that some USB adapters actually work better than others. Some of them can keep a more stable 5 volt output, but on the whole it's not really working that well. Um, and I think it's to do with the fact that the AC input to it just isn't that stable. And for anyone who's curious about the voltage, let's get the bike up to speed again so we can spin the motor. It doesn't matter which way we spin the wheel because it is AC. So I'm not sure if you were able to see there, but we were getting around 160 volts. Let me try again. Now some of you might be thinking, well, what good is three or four watts of electricity? You can't really power much with that. But remember, that's continuous. If you could somehow take this output and then dump it into a 12 volt battery, you could then draw the power out later at a higher wattage. But what I would really like to do is to get it working with one of these little USB adapters so that I can charge a power bank. That would be really cool so that, you know, if the time ever comes, I can use this as a generator or even those who are like in the provinces right now where power is always going out, they could buy something like this. These are very common and very cheap and they can make their own little DIY generator and then charge up their USB power banks when they're without electricity. Um, so yeah, I mean, I've kept this video short because no one's going to enjoy watching two or three hours of me fiddling around with electronics. But one of the things I did try earlier is I got a lead acid battery. This is a little 12 volt, seven amp hour type that you normally find in uh, UPS and stuff like that. And then I got this little 12 volt adapter and I actually powered this from the fan and then had that going through to the battery. But again, I was having problems measuring the output because I just couldn't get it stable. What we need is something that can accept the very fluctuating AC output and then, you know, output it a more stable DC. I thought something like one of these little AC to DC bricks would work quite well, but 
they're a little bit more fussy about the AC input being stable. So yeah, if anyone has any ideas, put it in the comment section down below. But this is definitely showing promise. This can definitely be used as a generator, um, even a wind generator potentially. In fact, let me put the uh, fins back on and then we'll put this in front of a fan and see just how well it spins. So I've now put a fan here just to simulate what it would be like if this was a wind generator or a wind turbine. So let me put the fan on its low setting. And you can see it gets up to speed with no problem at all. It really doesn't take a lot of wind to get this going. Although to be fair, this is a pretty high powered fan. So I don't know if it's the best simulation for wind, but you know, it's spinning it. And something else that I forgot to mention earlier is it seems to work quite well with my battery charger. This is for charging AA batteries or AAA batteries. And I'm gonna show you that now actually. If we check the voltage of this battery, we'll see that it's much too low. So that's coming in at 1.13 volts. And what I'm gonna do is find some way to mount this in front of the fan and just leave this going for, I don't know, say 10 minutes, 15 minutes, come back and check the voltage of the battery because I wanna make sure it is really charging. The lights come on and it looks like it's charging, but let's actually put it to the test. So I didn't actually come up with any solution for holding it. I just held it manually and it ran for about five minutes with the charging light staying solid the whole time. So let's check the battery voltage. So I don't really understand it, but somehow the voltage has actually gotten worse. So, hmm, that's not a good sign, is it? Now that last charger has like a brain inside that tries to do a lot of fancy stuff with batteries. What about if we just use a really basic charger like this? This is made for lithium ion batteries and I've got a little lithium ion battery here. Let's just try this instead, something, you know, back to basics. If we check the voltage of this battery, it's 3.947 volts. Um, so let's try the experiment again, but this time try and charge this lithium ion battery. And we put our turbine in front of the fan. The light should turn red to indicate it's charging. So again, I'll leave this for five minutes. We'll come back and check the battery voltage. So it's been about five minutes. Let's try and check the voltage. 3.965, so it has gone up. So there you go, we did have success charging this little lithium ion battery using this super basic charger. So I think really going back to basics works. Um, so yeah, that's actually quite positive, I like that. Um, so I think I'm gonna call it a day for now. I might come back in the future with some improvements, but if you have any ideas, put it in the comment section down below. But yeah, I'm quite happy with this. It's such a cheap little ceiling fan and it makes an, you know, a fairly decent generator or wind turbine, depending on how you wanna use it. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Thanks for watching.